Welcome to episode 7 of this tutorial series. We are playing Shadows of Forbidden Gods. My name is Dash Tactic. Welcome to the channel. Hope you've been enjoying the series so far. Uh, we're going to be talking about covens and actually sort of what we can do with the covens over time. I don't know if we'll get through all of the stuff in this episode with the covens, but also we're going to be looking at combat. And so we actually have our, our warlord who is an absolute beast. He's um, He's got a very high profile. So if we just zoom back out a little bit with him selected, press number two, he's now really seen in most of the landmass. So his profile file is extremely large. He's, everyone's aware of him. He's becoming a target, but he's just so strong. And his menace really means that he's a, a massive, massive target for everybody. If we just go back and have a look at these characters that are around him, they're all here to try to stop him. So they're tr trying to disrupt him. And if we have a look at their motivations, we should then see that they're by far the biggest motivation for her is to disrupt the warlord. Um, I don't know if she'll try to attack him. No, it's still still way too scary for her to attack him like it's she doesn't have any retinue so that's a negative 600 to attack that particular character now the menace drops out at 100 like the, the 100 is the maximum that we can sort of have in, in that one for these attacks so it doesn't matter how much more menace he gets he's at maximum so this one here as well attacking the warlord is way down the bottom of his list he's more likely to attack the uh, the chosen one than to attack the warlord to be honest even though he's not going to do that either. But it's just they're, they're too scared of him, but they will try to disrupt him. Now, while that's happening, it stops them from doing other things, which I don't mind. So the more of these people that are scared of him that hover around trying to sort of snipe at what he's doing, the better, because it just means that they're distracted. Now, what I want to do with the Warlord is I want to come into this city, the city of Esons, and hunt down the Chosen One. And this will, that way we can sort of have a look at combat. Now, you can see there that there's like a, a shape underneath there. This red shape means that the we, they know to look out for us. They will spot us if we stay spend any time at all in the city and we'll then automatically take some hit point damage. So we don't actually fight the guard. The guard sort of just do damage while we try to escape the city. So we can stay there for a few turns. and But also, we're going to have combat with the um, with the... With her, and so we're going to actually have to get through this knight who's got a hit points of five, four attack, and two defense, plus her, where she's got six attack. She's currently level four, and this is why I'm thinking now's the time to get rid of her. She's just gone up to another level, and she's actually trying to complete even more training. So she's uh, one more turn before she does complete that. So we'll see what we see what we can do here. Let's just go and uh, move on in before she gets any more strong, any more strength. So we'll move into that location. Then we have to decide what we're going to do at this location. Now, if I scroll on up, uh, you can see that we can attack all the different people that are here. We can attack Sir Yong Yin Yang, so we'll do that one. And she's the um, she's the main target we want to go for. We've got the mage in through here as well. So there's a mage that's just sitting underneath there. And uh, they're really the two things that we want to be doing. So let's just go ahead and do this. So we'll uh, sit and, uh, and click on the attack. Now, the attack is very, very simple in the game. So if I just click on that one through there, all it is, is literally each line will then attack whatever's in front of it. So whoever attacks first, and we're attacking first, we get to use our attack of eight against this character. Now it's got two defense and five HP. And so what that means is that our attack will actually kill that one off straight away. So we won't get a shot because, of, because the Warlord will then do it. But we can't go straight for her. We have to go past this unit in through here. Now, if he was in a different spot, and I can move these guys around, I can sort of shuffle them into different different locations if I'm wanting to using these arrows. So we'll get a shot there. Then I think they get the shot back. So she'll use the six attack to then hit the ogre. In fact, I'll just do it round by round and you can see what actually happens. So the first one, there's no dice, there's no die rolls or anything. It's just basically, it's an eight attack against basically a seven defense. So we hit that one straight away. So the, the, so the warlord deals eight and six actual damage to the actual hit points of the of the uh, knight, and so the knight is killed by the warlord. On the way back, she'll then sort of, I think that she moves next, and so she then uses the attack of six against a defense of three. So this one should be down to seven. Just proceed. Yep, so she, she deals six damage to the ogre, so we're down to um, three of which gets applied to, to his actual hit points. Now the ogre gets to move, so he does four attack, that will then destroy all of her defense. So her defense is down. Now that's the end of round one. Actually, this one here gets to also attack her as well. And so he's going to attack another four. So she'll be down to six after this because her defense is now nothing. So there's no defender there. So he'll attack straight into there. So we'll proceed. And, uh, and so he dealt four damage. She's down to six. 
Now she's retreating, so she's gonna start running and we're gonna start chasing her. So we'll just keep on hunting her down now while she's got such low hit points. We've had one miss there with the hit points, so he's down to seven, just end our turn. And so um, Sir, y Sir Yong has fled from the Warlord and escaped with their life for now. So we can do different things through here, where your agent survives and the hero flees. Your agent will gain notoriety uh, following the attack, even if the combat did not end in Sir Yong's death. So we can either get like plus 10 menace and plus 10 profile, which the pro it doesn't. neither of those worry me with this character. Um, we can have this one where Sir Yong also then gains a dislike for the Warlord, which means that she's more likely to attack us, which doesn't worry me because we're going to be killing her anyway. We can terrify the hero, so she actually gets a preference for combat and, and her preference for combat and danger decreases. So at the moment, if we minimise this and have a look at where she is, now she's run to here. So if we have a look at her abilities in through there, we'll sort of see that she has likes for both combat and cruelty and also one of the mediators as well. She dislikes ambition. So we can actually reduce that combat so that it's no longer something that she wants. Let's just do that because I mean, we're going to be sort of doing what we want to do anyway. And we also have goad. So um, preference for combat increases so that she'll actually sort of go out of her way to, um, to do combat. That could be interesting as well, like if we were going to keep her on the actual map. Anyway, let's just terrify the hero. So we do the terif we terrify her, we have a look, and then suddenly combat has now gone out of her likes. She no longer likes that. So our character is now sitting inside here, and we're going to need to move him off back into that location. So we've told him to travel away from the city. So he's bounced in and will bounce out. Now that shouldn't be long enough for the guards to find him. So we'll just end our turn here. She's travelling a quest. She's going to be completing her training at the city of Valais. So we're going to have to now chase her. Now we've been able to chase her down to here, so now we'll kill her off. So we'll dismiss that one. The courtier uh, completes the Infiltrate Coven of Witches, which we'll talk about in just a minute. So we'll just uh, dismiss that. And the Daughterhood. Now this is actually something that, um, that does come up, uh, where we can either recruit one of them as an entourage, which is not all that great. So when they do... Uh, so she will wait in the city of Valais for an agent to arrive. When they do, they can recruit her as a minion to summon a powerful first order, or to summon the powerful first order. That might be worth doing, actually. We might do that just as a... Like this other one just sort of leaves it um, where we sort of leave... This is in the... Um, seeing the daughter in the, of the city of Valais started screeching in terror. So this is um, so this is in the city of Valais that this one is actually happening. Again, we can just see where Valais is. Is that the one that we had over here? No, that Voliste... Where is Valet? If we just go back and, and I don't know if it'll show up in the um, in this one now. Or seven? No, no, we're not seeing it there. No, I'm not sure where Valet is. It's probably going to be up here somewhere. I am not seeing it. There it is, way down the south. Look, what I might do is I might I might leave it so that we can, if we go this one here, we, let's call her to serve. That way we can go and pick her up and she can become a minion of the uh, of the, the uh, courtier, which is right there. Call her to service. So we've got, uh, we can actually go into there now and pick her up. And so he's now, if we just talk a little bit more about the combat, let's just get the combat out of the way. So he is now going to combat her again. So he did get away with without losing any of his, any of his uh, hit points. Uh, I think these guys are still okay as well. Yep, seven, seven hit points in there. Let's just go and, and, and do the attack. So we'll attack Sir Yong and we'll kill her off. So we're killing off the Chosen One. Now, the next most powerful creature in the land will then take over after a fair few turns. And actually, we should have... I don't know if we can actually... Yeah, I've got to proceed once I start this one. So we attack with eight. Now, she's only got... She's got four defense, so she's got a total of ten defenses essentially so so she will still get another attack against this character i'll let that happen because we could then ditch this one after the next attack comes in he'll be down to four which isn't all that strong but i'll maybe keep him for a little while so we deal eight she's down to two proceed she then does the damage so that this one's down to four now proceed and then we kill her off so we've now killed the chosen one yay there we go <laughs> so combat is really quite simple in the game uh, vengeance so the mediator Finhan Jing Hang holds the killing of his compatriot so Yong Zing Zen to be entirely unjustified perhaps unforgivable and will not easily forget the murder committed by his rival warlock oh, sorry war or warlord Ferende. so warlord Ferende is getting more infamy now there's other things that's going to happen here we'll just dismiss that 
So she then dies. She's killed in battle with the, the warlord. So we dismiss that. And then we have the victory of the battle. So Warlord Ferende has defeated and killed Sir Yong Xinyang. News of this victory will stir your enemies into action and draw attention to the Warlord for better or for worse. Now we can just leave the body where it lies, where we get another plus 20 menace and plus 25 profile. Or we can take this option, where we get even more profile. So this one gives high menace and profile, making your agent a focal point for the attentions of the heroes and gives the trait infamous. When agents with the infamous are killed, they can be blamed for the actions of other agents you control, which have less than half their profile and menace, which is going to be everyone. <laughs> and as such, reduce those agents' menace and profiles, as the heroes of the world believe that they have killed the most dangerous enemy and that the danger is now past. Glorifying in victory, therefore, allows you to choose an agent to sacrifice in order to help the others keep a low profile. And so this is someone, something we want to set up with this particular warlord. He's going to have diminished returns as the game proceeds, like he's just a brute force. He's been great at the start, but he's pretty much now done what we needed him to do. So we will still get him to go off and maybe lay low or maybe try to find other things we can get him to actually go and, and, and attempt. Maybe, maybe we send him into the north. But in the end, he's going to be hunted down, and that's fine. So we'll just go with, we want the infamous trait because it helps everyone else if he gets killed. So we'll go that way. She had one gold. We'll take that. Thank you. So we're starting to get our riches together. Uh, click on done. And that's combat. So that's combat very, very quickly. It's a nice, simple system. Uh, he's now got 95 profile, which basically means the whole map, essentially, if we, particularly on these small maps. If I just go back and press number two again. With him selected yeah there's only a little bit that's not seeing him now back over here but the whole map is now aware of him so what we'll do is we'll send him off um to well, i don't think there's anything else we want to be doing on this side we'll sort of draw everyone up into this northern area and we'll start to raid some of the territories like there's still more villages up this way so let's send him up that way just to terrorize all of that this um if we just press two again this one here is uh is devastated that's going to sort of cause all sorts of troubles down through this part of the uh, part of the land so we'll move him up. So we'll move him up to that location there. So he's traveling to Yango village. And these others will probably follow him because um, they, everyone now wants to disrupt him with whatever he's going to be going off to do. Now I could get this to settle down to 32 and 65 respectively, but in reality, I want him to be the target. That's why I allowed him to get the infamous trait. Okay, so that actually does, what does it do with the world panic? Uh, it also temporarily reduces world panic if he gets killed. Now the panic is only at 10%, which is pretty low. So we're doing pretty well in here at this stage. Uh, let's continue on, let's continue on. So we've got the, um, now the next one, the, the, we've now got the coven. So let's talk about covens. When we have a look at this one, if we go back to challenges, we now have got complete infiltration here. And there's no sh enshadowment because the shadow has to come from a source of shadow from it, like over here. That's why getting these initial locations is just so important uh, and to allow the shadow to start to, to creep in. Now, we've been slowed right down in here. This one's still going pretty strong. This one should be starting to get a little bit more as well as it goes through. We've got this char character just laying low for now. So he's just trying to get the profile and the menace down a bit lower before we then bring him back out to do more work. His menace and profile is still very very low we can go and pick up this daughter let's just go and quickly do that and then we'll come back because we can shadow this one in 13 turns it requires law but it's fairly easy to do and we've also got in dark worship as well so spread shadow out from this location expanding the edge of the region that of shadow it is in an amount of shadow maximum total of 150 percent will be applied to the closest non-shadowed connected locations adds uh, 20 menace to this coven of witches I think I'll start with in shadow first and then come back for that one there. But let's go first of all and bounce into this system. So she foresaw all of this, the passage of things which have led to this point and those which will follow, all according to the will of inhuman and insane desires, which hate humanity in the few brief thoughts that they spare it. Despite the horror and the contempt she feels uh, for her, she is compelled by some inexplicable fascination to obey and will serve the purposes of this of the cult. So the first daughter then calls. So recruits this, this daughter as a minion. If you have a daughter minion, you can summon the first daughter by bringing an agent with a daughter minion to a desert location with a human soul modifier 
more daughters will boost the power of the first daughter. So I'm not sure how many daughters we're going to get through the course of the game, but we'll, we'll bring her into the protection of the courtier, who at this stage is sort of working with subterfuge. So he's now picked her up. So we've got a, a, the daughter Vass in through this side. She's very, very weak, just defence four, attack three. We're not going to be using her for, uh, for attack or defence. So we accept this. Um, and this, she's a minion, not a, not a, like, doesn't really in, impact our command limit at all. So that's good. So she's in the, in amongst the minions, dismiss that one. And, uh, we'll now just move back out of here. So he's, this he's no threat here at all. He's actually part of this group. They sort of see him as a compatriot. So, um, he's, uh, working with subterfuge and now she, now he's got one of the daughters in here as well. So we have to we have to eventually do do things in the actual in this area. But look, we'll go back to the coven and then sort of finish off what we were doing in, in through that side. Let's just end the turn. So he's now back in through here, and while he's actually in here, what we'll do is we'll get him to in shadow this location. So in shadow this location, creating an expanding region of darkness. Nobles will gain shadow if they are in shadowed locations and will not defend themselves against the threats the world it faces. So we'll just go and do that one for the courtier. Uh, it has to be completely. Uh, to, to use this one it has to have 100% infiltration, which we've now got. So that will then allow Shadow to creep out from there. And Dark Worship is like a one-off, massive boost to all of the other locations around it. So, um, and that doesn't matter about the infiltration when we do that Dark Worship. So we'll do that as well in 13 turns. So let's just end our turn through there. He's now finished getting to the minimum profile. So um, if we go to where he is... Uh, you can see his minimum, his profile is now minimum, but we've still got a long way to go with Menace, so we'll let that come down as well. The Lightbringer is aware, uh, is now 100% aware. This brings them, uh, it, it brings them awareness of your presence, nature, and true threat. If they're not highly in shadow, they will act. Uh, they will try to act against you uh, to defend their world. Now, he will try to do that one, so he's become aware. I don't think he is the chosen one yet, but he might become the chosen one. That's him right there. Actually, he is the chosen one. So he has become, if we just click out through here, yes, yeah, so the Lightbringer Pate Mems is now the chosen one. So he actually has become the chosen one at this location. He's still not going to be really targeting our character. We're not really noticeable. We're not really seen as a threat. Actually, we are down in here. So the menace, there's more base reluctance than the menace that, we, that we're creating. So we'll just sort of stay low. We'll, we'll reduce our menace and then see what he gets up to. Now, he is level two. So he's got a long way to go to catch up to where the previous chosen one was. <laughs> so he still gets like better attack areas, better better uh, hit points. His command goes through the, through the ceiling. So he can actually go and get a lot of strong units if he wants to. So that's fine. What we'll do is we'll start to watch him as well. So anything that he decides to do, we'll, um, we'll then get a, a notification. That's really quite valuable to do that. Uh, are the others following him? Yeah, they seem to be following him. Yeah, they're going to disrupt what he's doing. The other character seems to have sort of given up on that. I don't know where the other, the other fellow is. There he is. What's he going to be doing? He's guarding this particular mage. They're all really worried about the, um, this orc. <laughs> he's now hit, hit Fort Ponds and he's sort of now hitting hitting out into the ocean. Um, okay, we'll continue on. So we'll end our turn there. And again. Here are ordered to attack. So Mage uh, Zhang has been ordered to hunt down Warlord Ferende at any cost and has been assigned a military cavalry escort to ensure that they have the power required to accomplish this task. And so again, our, our guy will just be too strong. So he, he's going to send out a military cavalry escort. So it's like a small army to try to sort of catch him. He won't do it himself. Like he won't be there. Like if we go to go to, he's in this location. We'll just dismiss that and dismiss that. But he won't. He, it's not him himself that will be going and doing this one. It's this. It's this group here that will be trying to disrupt him. So um, I can attack him and kill him as well if we wanted to. Um, which, if I mean, if he's been tasked to attack us, I mean, why not? Hates the undead. Hates the shadow. Hates discord. Hates combat. All the things that we like. <laughs> So, so I think we'll kill him off. He doesn't actually have an entourage himself, but he does have this small group of, um, of this cavalry escort. Let's just do it. So he's actually come in with these different guys. Now, this is going to mean that they're going to be bypassing us a little bit. But remember, our first attacks get through 
their defences very, very easily. It's only this one here that will get a chance to actually attack us. So he's escorted by military. So we'll proceed, and we'll just keep on, we'll keep on doing this sort of damage uh, and bringing the infamy of this character up. Now, we may lose this, this guy here. Yet we smack that one straight away. So we, we proceed to the next one, and so we'll then... So the knight is killed, but then we do it again. So the, the a mage um, is reinforced. The mage deals two to the ogre, which only gets our defense down a little bit. Actually, that one's come back to life. It's interesting. Oh, he's got five characters, that's why. We proceed again. And so we've actually now, the knight, uh, the ogre deals four to the knight. Uh, the knight deals four to the ogre. So we're down to one. We then hit these guys again. So we may lose this one here. This could be interesting, actually. So um, then we go again. So this one here is now going to be fighting. And it's done some damage to us. It's brought our defense right down. So we do. this is actually a bit more difficult than we thought. <laughs> so um, if you flee, you will lose all your minions, which you don't, we don't want to do. So let's just keep on going. So we hit that one. That, just, that damages that one. So that's been completely killed. I think there's still one more that they can bring in. Uh, yep, they've killed him as well. So that's the new one that's come in. So we may lose this character. But again, there's benefits to that. We're now at a position where that's actually not such a bad thing. We'll proceed again. So he's now d damaging this particular unit. We've killed that one off. This one will hit into here again. So we're down to one point and we've been killed. So they've actually done it. So this character has actually done what he had to do and has brought our, our mighty leader to his knees. <laughs> So we'll end that one. Uh, a monster brought down. So Warlord Ferente has been killed, infamous and feared across the lands. They were a very visible symbol of the evils facing the world. Now that he is dead, the world breathes a sigh of relief, believing the, the danger to be past. World panic is temporarily reduced, and all agents who are below half his profile and menace, which is everybody, have their profiles and menace reduced, if not already at minimum. So that just means that we can now get all of our other agents to start acting again. So this one has served his purpose, which is exactly what we wanted. So more dust, more disappointment. So no effects in through there. And so he now will should have, yeah, he's now got the Manticore. And he does actually have these minions as well with him. So uh, I wish I would show you that they, he does actually have these. <laughs> so he's got beyond that. He's, he's, he was tasked with that particular thing. So he's actually brought the, um, he's, fought, he's, he's met him on the, on the waves and, uh, and defeated the mighty Warlord. But the Warlord did everything we needed him to do. We no longer need that character because he's caused such problems now we've got a new agent that we can bring in we've only got one more recruitment point but that's exactly what we want these age what these these warlords to do i don't want to get another one because i'm not going to get the next recruitment point like i only get these every 45 turns and i think i'm still a fair way off getting the next recruitment point so if we have a look at these guys he's now down to basically minimum menace uh because of that the world panic is is fairly low. Victory, we've now got one hero that's in shadowed. Okay, that's good. And um, and this one as well. We're down to basically minimum through through this side as well. So he is um, he is yeah creating the enshadowment in nine more turns. What we'll do with this one is we'll have a quick look at this location. This one's down to zero security now, so we can now sort of finish off the infiltration. We've got the markets already done. We can do the docks. Actually, we've got four power. I should actually start to do even more infiltration, particularly in these other regions. So what I think we'll do is we'll start to push up into here and into here and start to sort of surround this, get the shadow to start to encroach up this way. So let's just go and use the power. So eyes in the, in the shadow. So we'll just go this way and we'll hit this location, which has got a library and market. So we'll select that one. So a bit of enshadowment there. And I'm thinking rather than going into another city, Although I could do it, I guess. And what's the character here like? Yeah, he just he's a bit of a nothing, so that's okay. Um, actually, let's let's in shadow this one as well. Although if I in shadow that one, he's already fifty percent in shadowed anyway as a as a character. So if I actually do the in shadowment, well, actually I can bounce him back in to do that one anyway next time after we do this um, after we in shadow this region in here. So I think what we'll do is we might come back to this this location. I'm just seeing yeah, he doesn't like orcs, doesn't like disease. That's okay. Um, he's not going to put up wards at this stage. So let's use the power there, or we could use it here. And that might be that might be a worthwhile thing as well, just to start to get the shadow to creep into this region. 
Let's do this one over here. So even though it's not a city, although we could even do that one, even though we don't actually have... It's only far sewers and then the palace itself, and it's down to three security now. This is also becoming very, very open. All right, let's, um, let's use our power yet again. We'll just go Eyes in the Shadow, and we will we'll set it here. Let's have a quick look and make sure. Yep, it's only Cruelty. That's okay. Select. So we'll, that way, at least, we'll start to get the conduits of shadow sort of marching through this part of the land. Um, everyone is, is active, but we can bring another agent in. So what I'll do is we'll go and uh, create another agent. And who should we use? We can use the Trickster if we wanted to. I'm thinking of using a Warlock, where we've got you know, high law and, um, and uh, lowish intrigue, but we can bring that one up. Let's bring a Warlock in, so it can be placed in, in, a, in a city with, with a library. And so we're gonna go and place him in this city that we just, in, like we've, we've just corrupted the library here. So let's go into this location. So the library is now infiltrated. So um, we can actually, we can place him in any place with a library. It doesn't really matter where that actually is, but let's start him off in here. So let's select that one there for him. And so now we're gonna be doing more of the sneaky stuff for a little while in the game. Uh, so this is now the, war, the Warlock, and he comes in with either a Mastery of ge Geomancy, uh, unlocks the ability to cast Geomantic Spells. Geomancy is the art of changing the climate of the world to suit the caster's desires. Requires you to find a Geomantic Locus, which there are a few in the world, and Magic so will draw from the Locus's power. Uh, Mastery of Death, so unlocks the ability to cast Death Magic Spells. Death Magic draws off recent death from famine, plague, war, or worse. worse. So there's a lot of death around. Uh, death modifiers allow a range of abilities to be cast by those who have mastered death magic. The school allows a number of summoning powers, granting minions, armies, or, or, or shadow-spreading creatures, which sounds like fun. And then we've got blood magic, which revolves around hexes and curses, not hexes on the map, <laughs> which uh, target individuals and families and employs personal items as the link between caster and victim. Powers are, are available when holding a personal item from a character. Now, we can get that. We can do either, like, I'm sort of interested in one of these bottom two, to be honest, just for the fun of it. We can get the items using this character here. <laughs> so we can get him to steal stuff, give it to this one here, and then we can sort of hex the uh, the families. Let's do that. That makes it a bit more intricate, and we can then sort of talk a little bit more about that one. This is interesting as well. But anyway, let's just go that way. So we've now got ourselves a Warlock. This is Warlock Crace. And uh, so he's now at this location. And so he's got different things that he can then go and do. You can see Blood Magic Taunting Lure. So it creates a Taunting Lure at this location. If a hero purges this lure, they will drop a personal item as, as an item cache, which can then collect to, to use them in Blood Magic rituals. Lure will, will gain uh, potential, uh, sorry, bonus uh, purge motivation for heroes if the lure is in their home location or a location of a family member rules. So we'll remember that one as well. But I think what we'll do is we'll learn the Arcane Secret. So this one here, learn the arcane secret here, removing it and increasing the user's arcane knowledge. Arcane knowledge can be used to increase the mastery of schools of magic, but agents gaining magical power will cause panic. Okay, so maybe we don't do that one. We've got secrets of death, produce an arcane secret by, yeah, we don't need that one there. There is actually a, a dead soul here, I think, if we, if we click on that location and go to modifiers. Yeah, human soul is there for a little while. So uh, she died there, the Duchess, so we can actually make use of her in, in our magic. Uh, Infiltrate the market is going to take way, way, way too long. So he's not very strong in um, in intrigue. It's more law that he's good at. So um, dangerous knowledge he can do in ten turns. This causes uh, this arcane secret to inflict five sanity damage to any hero mage who studies it. I don't think I'll bother with that one. I think I might still go back to this one here. We get seventy-two XP from that one. What about this one here? We get we do that in ten turns as well. We get forty-nine. Look, what I might do is let's have a look and see what we've got. Uh, who's in here? This is um, the Duchess Bray's. You know, is the king in here would be interesting to drop an item there for the heroes to look for. There's a few heroes that are from that particular family and from that particular grouping. Let's move. Um, let's move him out. Actually, if we move him back out to here, he can then do the Dark Worship. So that way we can push things out very, very quickly. And he can do that in uh, nine turns. So let's go and get that one done. Okay, so we've now got three agents again. We've lost our, our main fighting agent. And it doesn't matter in this game. Like, that's actually then helped us along. It's allowed this character to now come back out. He's, he was laying low. We can stop that from happening because we're basically now at minimum because of that sacrifice. 
and we can do things, for example, like infiltrate the docks. So I've still got two more locations here that we have to get. We've got the docks and we've got the city palace over through here. I think we've got two as well, vast sewers and city palace. So let's go and do that. What are these guys doing? They're trying to get rid of the unrest. And he was going off to disrupt the warlord as well. So, <laughs> so they were all focused on him. He didn't live long enough, uh, but it was still, it's still worthwhile. It still worked for us. As long as we've got recruitment points, you know, if we lose, as long as we've got a recruitment point when we lose an agent, we're okay. Uh, now we get the next, the next seal will break in 15 turns. Now I think we should have the next one within that time frame as well, I would imagine. So we'll infiltrate the docks. I can't do the castle until all of the other locations have been done. So we'll get this infiltration underway. So we'll end our turn. Wards have been established. Just go to wherever that is, that's over here. And turn. Yep, that's okay, and turn. Family he uh, healing, uh, falling to the shadows. So Queen Tyrion's uh, has been falling, uh, it's been watching her husband, Baron Capere, falling into the shadow, his soul being slowly undermined by forces from beyond robbing him. So she gains a hatred for shadow and is completely purged of any small amount of, that she did actually have. So the shadow is inescapable. Now, I don't know where she is. That's her there. Where is she? I forget where she actually is. Oh, and this is the other person. We can view this person. And have a bit of a look here. So she, okay, she's the queen in here. So she's now got a, an absolute hatred for the shadow itself. I don't know why we can't see what she's got there. It's interesting. It's not showing up. Anyway, let's return to this decision and have a look at her now. Yeah, they're in capitals there, in uh, in bright red. She hates the shadow, and she's got a hundred percent awareness. So she's going to become a bit of a thorn in uh, trying to stop what we're doing. So sh any shadow that she had is now gone. Um, he is still falling to the shadow, and so we want this to continue a, a, a pace. And this one will once we actually get this coven under our control. So we'll um, we'll leave all that where that is, and we're pretty much out of time, guys. And I think we're sort of now at a point where we'll probably sort of get more into a, like a let's play style of game, and uh, and sort of just start to get the shadow to encroach in more and more into what's actually going on. But th this was a good session just to go through how we can then start to use the covens. I mean, how far off are we with this? Only five turns left there, nine, five turns there. Let's just quickly do it so you can see the impact. So we'll just quickly do this one, beginning a quest. So he's going off to complete training at Vol Estate. Let's miss that one. Uh, skeleton Warriors. So the courtier has been encountered. It's encountered a group of Skeleton Warriors. I think what I'll do, he's down. He's got five hit points again. So we'll just undo this one and lose three of them. Uh, that way he'll be finished a little bit earlier. So we'll just end our turn. End our turn. Wards have been established again. We'll just go to where that is. That's over here. That's a bit of a worry because this is sort of areas that we do want to be encroaching into. So we're still setting things up. Uh, end our turn again. The supplicant completes infiltrate the docks. That's good. And the courtier now it completes the enshadowment of this particular location. We'll have a look at that in just a minute. And the warlock completes dark worship all at the one time. Now that's all done a lot of different things. So worship of the forbidden gods is prohibited and with good reason. Their names curse the air and sap life from the sun. And to give sacrifice to them is to welcome them into, into the world. So we'll dismiss that one. Now we can see through here, we now have got 100% in shadowment, but look at the shadows that are now encroaching into these areas. This guy, this one here has got taken 60%. So we had like 150. And so these have all taken a big hit of shadow from what's just happened back at this location. So these have, the, even though we don't have any infiltration, the shadow is encro encroaching into here in a big, big way. This coven is now gonna be spreading the shadow very, very thoroughly but we still have to go and, and set these guys up. So I'll leave it there. So we'll leave this episode here. That just shows how to use the covens. Now we've still got two more covens we can do this with. Uh, this one, I don't think we can go back and do, you can still do more dark worships in through here. So this is, in this we don't get much profile or menace. So I can just leave this ca character to just literally keep on doing that. It's only nine turns for him. So um, that would be a good thing for us to use the Warlock for initially, just to keep on pushing out that 150% of shadow back out from that particular location. Anyway, leave it there. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.